So let's go ahead and get into new GPUs. We have AMD RX 50, or sorry, 50, <laughs> 6500 XT to talk about. It's gonna be launching in January, and there is also the RX 6400 that will be in March of next year, and will feature entry-level RDNA Navi 24 GPU with four gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. So, as you guys know, the DAG on Ethereum is above four gigabytes. These are probably not gonna be relevant specifically for that. Now for Ethereum Classic, it could be relevant for, I believe, uh, some of the other one, Flux, uh, would be relevant, some other coins, right? So it could still be relevant from those perspectives, especially with the launch being so close to the presumed proof of stake merge, which there was a commenter. And here's the thing, when you guys comment, uh, if you comment something like Ethereum merge has been delayed till 2023, at least like maybe just put in quotes the article that the article title so I can Google that up because to me, I'm not seeing any official announcements of a delay of proof of stake to 2023 at this time. So if you guys do say stuff like that, if you could help me out, because I'll, I'll talk about it. I just need at least like, maybe in the comment section, like quote out the title of whatever article that you've been basically getting this information from, because if I can't verify it, then it's kind of hard to talk about. So let's go ahead and get into the remaining specifications for this GPU and look at the article. More details regarding AMD's entry-level RDNA 2 Navi 24 GPU powered Radeon RX 6500 XT and 6400 graphics cards have leaked. The new information comes from enthusiast citizen over at Bilibili social network. Bilibili, Bilibili. That's gonna be, that's a hard one right there. Bili, Billy, Bili, Billy. All right, moving on. AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT with full Navi 21 RDNA 2 GPU in January and the RX 6400 with the Navi 24 Lite rumored for March launch. We know that AMD is preparing at least two graphics cards based on its Navi 24 RDNA 2 GPU, the Radeon RX 6500 XT and the Radeon RX 6400. Both of these graphics cards will be aiming for the entry level segment. The RX 6500 XT will be competing directly against the RTX 3050 Ti and Intel Arc A380. Now we've talked about both of those GPUs in last week's show, so make sure that you go check those out if you want more information on those specific GPUs. AMD RX 6500 XT graphics card with Navi 24. All right, so the AMD RX 6500 XT will be utilizing the full Navi 24 XT GPU die, internally known, uh, excuse me, internally known as Beige Gobi. The AMD Navi 24 GPU is the smallest of the RDNA 2 lineup and will feature a single SDMA engine. The chip will feature two shader arrays for a total of eight WGPs and a maximum of 16 compute units. AMD has 64 stream processors per compute unit, so that brings the total core count on the Navi 24 GPU to 1024, which is half that of the Navi 23 GPU, which will offer 2048 stream processors in 32 compute units. In addition, the number of cores each shader array would feature 128 kilobytes of L1 cache, one megabyte of L2 cache, and there would also be 16 megabytes of infinity cache. So there, there's that infinity cache that they've kind of used to basically up their performance levels when in traditional rasterization versus NVIDIA and hasn't really been applied to mining at this point yet. The AMD Navi 24 RDNA 2 GPUs will also be featured across 64-bit bus interface and will be featured on low-end Radeon RX 6500 or 6400 series parts. That's a very, very tiny bus width, by the way. I think when we were talking about the 3050, those are going down to what, 98, was that correct? 96, 96, yeah, 32, yeah, because it always goes up by 32 bits. So it was 96 bit bus on the 3050. Um, but 
It's also expected to get really high clocks, but that's going to be on the core, so it shouldn't really impact mining at all. As for specifications, the RX 5600 XT graphics card will feature 1024 cores and 4 gigabytes of GDDR6X. The card would not be able to operate in a mining in any mining algorithm, especially ETH. That's weird because why wouldn't it be any? I don't think I agree with that WCCF tech. Uh, the top model will feature a TDP slightly above 75 watts. As such, will require external power connectors to boot. The card is expected to launch in mid-January, so expect an announcement at CES 2022. The second card in the RDNA2 lineup is the 6400, which will be based on the slightly cut down XL chip with 768 cores. The card will retain its 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and feature slightly lower clocks, but still at the 2.5 gigahertz frequency range. It is reported that the 6400 is not going to require any power connectors to boot thanks to its sub 75 watt TDP. It will be available in March around the same time as Intel launches its first Arc Alchemist GPU. Both GPUs will be aimed at entry-level segments with MSRPs of sub-200 to 250 US since the RX 6600 series is already positioned in the premium 1080p gaming segment. Expect the 24 G Navi 24 GPUs to be aimed at the entry-level 1080p gaming market, but given that AMD has raised the prices of RDNA 2 GPUs, and alerted its AIB partners to do the same too, the entry level market may end up in another mess for budget builders trying to get something after a year's wait. So you have all the specifications here. Let's find those. We're down here at the bottom. We're looking at a total bandwidth of 112 gigabytes per second. Now, we're going to calculate this out for ETH for fun, but keep in mind this is purely theoretical, provided the DAG would fit. So it could apply to Ethereum Classic, and pretty much that's it. Maybe there's one, you know, one other ET hash, I think like Quark or something like that. We'll we'll do it. We're going to calculate it out, but it's not going to be it's not going to be great, right? So uh, we have the 6600 here, and we have the 6600 XT here as well. We know that the 6600 is doing about 30 mega hash a second so we can go ahead and get our percent calculator out as you guys know that i like to use and basically what we need to calculate out here is going to be basically the percentage of these two it's about half it is half 112 versus 224 so it's 50% so theoretically, you would be looking at, you know, essentially looking at 15 mega hash a second on these GPUs. I, like, I don't even have to do the percent calculator. <laughs> like, we're talking about half the memory performance, so we're talking about half the hash rate, is essentially, on Ethereum. So there's no worries there. Now, the 6400 would probably be what you went with, right? And then you would probably be able to potentially get like it's a sub 75 watt card so it'll definitely never probably go over 20 percent of that so it'll probably in theory right never go above 60 watts and then if you tune that in you know we could be talking about 30 to 40 watts of power consumption on the 6400 the 6500 xt is probably uh not the buy even for other altcoins at this time and we're still looking at, of course, wanting to see where Infinity Cash could be leveraged. To me, where you would see it would be an example like, of course, Raptorium with its heavy focus on the CPUs and the L3 cache there. If you could figure out a way to maybe leverage Infinity Cash there, maybe that would be possible. Is it gonna be done? Doubtful. That's the only idea uh, coming from, you know, someone that's not experienced with writing miners or anything so there you go if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe to see more also you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency